I can't believe we're down to one more rehearsal till opening night. Where does time go? Now, what did I need to check? Ah, that's right. Need to make sure the WD-40 fix the squeaky noise. That seems all okay to me. Audience reminders. One, switch mobile devices to silent or off. Two, any personal filming of the performance you're about to see is strictly prohibited. Three, Restrooms are located to the rear of the building. What's this doing here? It should be at the door entering the theatre. Show night. Really? Yes, turn around. The theatre has gone quiet because the audience is ready for the show to start, not because it's empty and the cast are yet to arrive for rehearsal. You need to leave the stage now. Uh, uh, I'm so sorry. In all my years of doing this job, I've never done this before. I hope you enjoy the show. Can't people see the no vacancy sign? Yes, yes, I'm coming. I suppose I really should open the door, considering the weather that's approaching and knowing we're still expecting a late check-in. Hey, Greta! This place looks a bit posh for us. Yeah, Graham. Maybe they'll take one look at us and boot us out of here. I think saying the night here might be a little more than we can afford anyway. Don't worry, remember? We grubs always find a way to come up with the cash we need. No, I wouldn't say that was quite what I was expecting. Perhaps next time you'll allow me to get the door. Oh, good evening. My name is Rhonda Random. I'm sure you have a reservation in my name. Ah, yes, Miss Random, we do. We've been waiting for you. Excellent. Sorry for arriving a little later than expected. I'd like to pay my account immediately, please. Not a problem. Will you be joining us for dinner this evening at an additional cost of $50? Thank you, but no, I won't be. Once I've checked in, I must attend to some business in Simpleville before the storm hits. Very well. That will be $300. Thank you. Genevieve, could you please escort Miss Random to her room? Ah, oh, thank you. But I really must get this simple room. I'm placing my bag in my room, ready for my return. That will be no problem at all, Miss. Ma'am, don't forget your purse. Ah, oh, thank you. Sorry, but we haven't any rooms left. She'll be right. I have a feeling we'll get lucky and find something on the road to Simberville. Definitely. Yes. Ah! 
Why did you step on her bracelet? The tag said it was priceless. Let's just get out of here. yourself. Then the lawyer asked Jesus the question. Who is my neighbour? Instead of answering that, Jesus told a fascinating story filled with mystery, danger, surprise and truth. Mountain Vista Inn on a dark and stormy night long ago in 1939. Guests are assembling in the drawing room for a quiet dinner to follow. However, the evening will be anything but quiet. Shall I get it? Yes, very well. <laughs> An injured lady mysteriously appears on the doorstep. Who is she? What happened to her? What does it all mean? You may be shocked. You may be amazed. You may laugh out loud, but you'll soon not forget as Master's Peace Theatre presents a not-so-terrible parable. The lady... A real estate investor. Her name, Rhonda Random, a guest of the inn who left earlier that day, planning to use the money she carried to buy property in the nearby town of Simpleville. Oh no! Familiar. <coughs> who is it? Ladies, this is one of our guests, Miss Random. The proprietor of the Old, gracious Mountain Vista Inn is Mrs Grace S. Mountain Vista, a pillar of the community. She cares for her guests and caters only to the creme de la creme of clients. Oh, it's her all right. <coughs> she left earlier today to look at some property she wanted to buy in Simpleville. She had a lot of money with her, as I remember. Nothing gets past Jeeves, the butler. If Mrs. Mountain Vista <coughs> is the heart and soul of this inn, Jeeves is the motor that makes it run smoothly. The uh, last thing I remember was getting on the toll road to Simpleville. Are you all right? I'll be okay, I guess. My money, it's gone. All of it. Oh no! You were wrong. 
robbed and beaten. Do you need a doctor? I'd say I would, but peers have already been treated and bandaged. You were robbed and beaten by a doctor? If Jeeves is the brains of the Manson Vista Inn, well, leave it the maid isn't. But, as you know, no story can be told without a maid or a butler. No, Yvette. Doctors don't rob and beat people. Robbers do. Of course! Robbers! The name should have given it away. Clearly, Miss Randall was in no condition to get back to the inn by herself, so somebody must have bandaged her wounds and brought her here. Look! An envelope! This wasn't here I left. There's writing on it. Please take care of this lady. I found on the toll road to Simpleville. There's almost $100 in here. Who gave this to you? And who brought you here? I have no idea. I remember nothing. Are you poor thing? That's, 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 that's terrible. Oh, and Yvette is a little dramatic. No other clues? The only thing I've still got is my bracelet. And it looks like it's been stepped on. That's probably why they didn't take it. <laughs> <coughs> no, I think I'll handle this one. Sally Fletcher in the flesh. Yes, Sally Fletcher, the most famous detective in the world. No case too big, no cause too small. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please say hello to my assistant, Nancy. What brings a famous private detective out here on a night like this, Miss Fletcher? I've been brought in to solve this case for the Simperville Toll Road. And I've come to see your Miss Random. But Miss Random doesn't remember a thing. We'll see about that. What about your other guest? I'm not sure we can be of any service. You got this. All of our guests were in the house all evening. All of them? Well, except lawyer Jenny Barrister and the door-to-door -door Bible seller, Brookbinder, but they have both indicated they will be joining us for dinner this evening. <sighs> what a terrible storm. Yeah, just about blew my Mercedes off the road. Well, well, looks like the gang's all here. Why don't you take a seat? Nobody. Absolutely no. Body leaves this room till we find out who done it. Suspect, do you, Detective? Maybe. Maybe not. You know I never hurt anyone like that. I do believe you, Barrister. But... Well, it happened tonight and I am right here. Oh. Yeah.
anything you want to tell me, Finder? I don't have any idea what you're talking about. You're afraid I'll throw the book at you? Not at all. Books are my business. You know I'd never hurt anyone like that. I think I believe you, Binder. Do you think the robbers knew she had all that money? Not sure. You might just have been a random victim. Just a little more understanding. Could help find someone outstanding. Who is the neighbor that came to the rescue? We need the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Step forward. Well, the plot thickens. Who came to the aid of the poor injured lady? Is the person who saved Miss Random in the room? What about the robbers? Oh my, I can't wait. Let's get back to our story. <gasps> no, it's my turn. Samantha Arrington, it's the delivery girl from Pete's Loser and Simpleville. Someone ordered an ab gherkin and cranberry sauce pizza. Ew! Ew. Disgusting. Disgusting. That's gross. Gross. Yeah. gross. Wait a second. That unusual smell, it's familiar. Did that trigger a bad memory? That's strange. They usually don't get the address wrong. Even if there was a mix-up, I'm just glad you're here. We may have to end up serving our guest pizza tonight due to the storm we had an unexpected power outage. I don't think Chef Victoria is going to be able to get the gourmet dinner cooked on time. I'll fetch the chef and see what she has to say. Chef Victoria? Chef Victoria, do you think we'll need to order pizza tonight? Lady Grace, please be patient. Now that the power's back on, I'm working as fast as I can to have dinner ready for our guest. That pizza smells horrible. I simply won't allow something so disgusting to be served at the Mountain Vista Inn. And it obviously isn't cooked by a professional. Well, obviously. And it's cold. <laughs> So it is. That's interesting. Oh, uh, well, I had a long drive. Excuses, excuses. But it's not that far to Simpleville. It's been a longer trip than usual tonight, trust me. Well, have a good night. She seemed in quite a hurry to leave. And the pizza was cold. Almost as if... She was doing something else. Like robbing! <gasps> Not now, Jeeves. <sighs> All right, Baxter. <coughs> Bill it. What happened tonight? You're the detective, Fletcher. Ooh, Ooh hot. Roasted. Roasted. <laughs> Very well. Lucky for me, I brought along my flashback set. Nancy. Bring it in. Right away, Matt. Flashback set. Flashback set. What's a flashback set? It's the latest thing. Everybody is so visual today. You can't just tell a story anymore. Bash on tell. How does it work? I tell the story of what happened and the flashback artist acted out. So you understand the facts. <coughs> okay, Barrister. 
You are driving up here from Simperville on the toll road. You saw Miss Random lying on the road. Maybe, you thought, he fell out of an ambulance. No! Yes! He thought about helping her, but then he wondered if it might be a trap. The cops might just be over the hill, he figured. You wanted to leave, but you needed to know if that was legal. So you checked in your big book of laws. And that's when you left her in the mud. So as you can see, Barrister, we matched the tire tracks. So? It's coming back to me. Somebody checked on me, then drove away on a fancy car, a Mercedes, just like the one Miss Barrister drives. So you may not have been one of the robbers, Barrister, but it appears that instead of helping the wooden Miss Random, you hightailed it out there. Nice story, detectives, but the law is based on evidence. No evidence don't stay. Don't we? Yvette, bring out Miss Barrister's big book of laws. Whoa! Careful, ladies! <laughs> See, just as I was telling ya, dry as a burn. If I was using it in the rain, it would be soaked. Hmm. Except for the page where you looked up who is my neighbor. And that page is soaking. <gasps> that's, that's, that's terrible. <coughs> Is she going to be okay? That's like the third time. It happens. Please continue with your ranting and raving. Thank you. Listen up, copper. I'm not taking the fall for this. I know the law and I didn't lay a finger on this. Sure. Neighbour. But this lady was just some palooka. If the law doesn't say I have to, why should I? Ah, that is a very good question. Why should we stick out our necks or lay down our lives for someone else?
this is getting interesting. Full of Ms. Barrister wasn't the robber, and she didn't save Ronda Random. That appears to leave only one suspect, Brooke Binder, the door-to-door -door Bible seller. If someone who makes her living with the Bible wouldn't save a poor, injured victim, who would? And if she didn't, why not? <gasps> who could that be? On a night like this, I'll get it. Aha! It's Miss Samantha, standing in the doorway with the pizza. What are you doing here, again? I guess that is the question I should be asking you people. Someone ordered a large anchovy, kale and applesauce pizza. <sighs> That's horrible! You're telling me I don't have time for prank orders. No, I meant the pizza. Who would order anchovy, kale and applesauce pizza? Ew. Ew. That's Sorry. disgusting. That's disgusting. Yuck. 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 Let me guess. No one ordered it, but just keep it. No one else would want it. Don't mind if I do. Well, good night. Wait a sec. Unusual smell. It's familiar again. Brooks, but I got a few questions for you, and I'm gonna go right to the last chapter. You looking for a revelation? Don't play hardback with me, Binder. I'm looking for answers. You sell books, don't you, Brooke? Bibles, Fletcher. Bibles? That must make you an expert. I know everything about Bibles. Ours come with an eternal guarantee, and they're bound only in the finest quality imitation leather. Expensive? Imitation cows aren't cheap. I get what's on the out. Tell me about what you know about what's between the covers. I told you, I know everything. We use the finest in paper, and all the words of Jesus are printed in deluxe imported red ink. Um, okay then. What does the Bible say about loving and helping your neighbor? Well, yeah, it probably talks about that, but you see, I'm helping people every day. I'm selling Bibles to people in need, and if you're poor, I throw the red ink in for free. Hold it. I remember smelling mother. She must be the one who saved me. Maybe. Maybe not. You're an open book to me, Binder. Nancy, bring out my flashback set again. Right away, ma'am. All right, Binder. You are driving along. And car walk what you could see. What you could see was a lady. You didn't recognize her as one of your customers. So you walked back to your car. But when you did, your foot got stuck in the mud. I'm not spineless, Fletcher. You're writing fiction. I'm writing nothing. You already wrote chapter and verse. Whoever walked away from Miss Random, when they pulled it out, the bottom of the right shoe came off. You don't mean. Yes. Whoever walked away from Miss Random, there. Are you saying I'm a soul, Fletcher? Well, if the shoe fits. Hold on. Not so fast. Nancy, can you take a look at Miss Binder's right to... Ah, yes. Keep looking. Careful! Yes, I thought. Your right shoe? 
has no so. ah! <sighs> We can't be there all, all the, the time. time. She's first supposed to yell. That's terrible. Okay then. Okay. What about loving and helping your neighbor? It's not my fault. She was muddy. Can you imagine getting mud all over my new Bibles? No one would buy a muddy Bible. Besides, she's not my neighbor. I've never even seen her before. Don't get what exactly? <coughs> it seems that you spend a lot of time with the Bible. Not enough. Bible. Or better yet, letting the truth of God's word get from here and here. Enjoying watching this story so far. There's nothing like who done it to get you thinking. How about you guys? Have you enjoyed the story so far? Oh yeah, I totally agree. I found myself sitting on the edge of my seat going ooh and ah, just like the maids. Although I'm not dramatic as your vet. What? Who's your vet? Is she the detective or butler? No, silly, she's the overdramatic maid. You might be a little confused. Let's review the story so far. An audience, we need your help. When you see this sign, we'd like you to give your best. And when you see this sign, we'd like you to give your best. Ah. So let's have a practice. Ready? Great, so let's review the story so far. It was one dark and stormy night at the Mountain Vista Inn. Ooh. When Arthur checking in, an innocent real estate agent was brutally attacked, robbed and left to die by the side of the road. Ah. Back at Mountain Vista Inn, the staffs were desperately trying to keep their guests happy when there was a knock on the door. Ooh. When the butler opened it, it was Rhonda Random beaten and bruised. Ah! But how did 
did she get there? Who brought her to safety, leaving money for her medical costs and food? Was it the maid? Was it the butler? Or was it the barrister with her big book of laws? It was then, at this moment, our trusty detectives, Fletcher and Nancy, entered the scene to question our suspects. Miss Barris seems like a big law and order until it's discovered that one of her pages in a book of laws is wet. Ah. She must have been out in the rain, but why? Could she be the kind guilty of the kind to save Miss Random? Mm. Or was it Miss Binder, the bookseller? Are her hands stained with red ink from her Bibles or with blood? Ah. Or maybe it was someone we haven't even thought of yet. Ah. So there it is, in a nutshell. Was it the maid or was it the binder? It all will be revealed in scene six, which starts now. Well, it would seem that we're in a conundrum. I don't exactly know what that is, but I believe we are in it. We know now that Brista nor Binder save Ronda Random and neither of them was involved with the robbers. Everyone else has an alibi. Or do they? Well then, one person. I'll get it. No, no. I think I'll handle this one. Pizza delivery. Samantha. Well, well. Look who's here. And what do we have here? Could it be Ms. Random's purse? Empty. What do you have to say for yourself, Samantha? I just found it out on the toll road. The robbers must have thrown it away. I was on my way to bring it back. What a stroke of evil genius. Delivering pizzas we never ordered to find out who would be on the toll road tonight with money. Well done, detectives. You helped us solve the crime ourselves. But if Miss Samantha was with the robbers, who saved Miss Random? Robber? I'm not a robber. The police caught the robbers. They told me when I delivered three meat lovers pizzas to them an hour ago. Jeeves, your logic would have been perfect, except I was the one who ordered the pizzas sent to the end. You? Is this terrible yet? We don't know yet, Yvette. Just go to your job. What are you all talking about? Samantha, do you mind telling us what you did tonight? I was delivering pizzas all evening. Ah, oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Tell tell us. Us. Tell us. Okay. Okay, everyone. Anything unusual happen tonight? You mean out on the toll road? Yeah, I found that lady right there who looked like she had been robbed. Don't you remember? Not really. Miss Random, I think I just figured something out. Samantha is the one who actually rescued you. I had so many pizzas to deliver, I couldn't stay with her until after my shift tonight. So I brought her here and left money for medicine. I was coming back l later to make sure I'd left enough. You believe that, Fletcher? Have you lost your senses? Hold on, we'll see. Nancy, would you hold my clipboard? Yes, ma'am. What are you thinking of doing? To do this, I'm just gonna pull this here. Ah, rip it right off! Just as I thought. These aren't regular bandages. They're pizza napkins. You want to read what it says, Rhonda? Pizza Palooza, Pizza Parlor, Simpleville. <coughs> Samantha, can I take a look at your order book, please? You have your tips for the day listed here. They come to $94.21. Miss Random, how much money is in that envelope in your pocket? $94.21. Samantha? 
Why did you leave almost a hundred dollars in here? Because that's all I had. Why didn't you tell us? You didn't ask. I mean, it's nothing special. Any of you would have done the same thing, right? I mean, Jesus rescued me. He had mercy on me. How can I not help someone? He needs mercy, right? Right? Sent your son to save us. Lost in sin, you gave the greatest gift, the sacrifice we couldn't give. There is mercy we don't deserve, there is grace we could never earn, and hope because of what Jesus has done for us. Let the world hear the good news Jesus came to our rescue It's in this life He came to live The sacrifice He came to give Now all who call upon The name of Jesus shall be saved our God has made a way. There is mercy we don't deserve. There is grace we could never earn. And hope because of what Jesus has done for us. Let the world hear the good news. Don't you all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by God you have been saved. Ephesians 2, 4 and 5. There is mercy we don't deserve. There is grace we could never earn. And hope because of what Jesus has done for us. Let the world hear the good news. We're all undeserving, but Jesus, your mercy, come hear the good news. Jesus came to our rescue. So it seems our mystery has been solved, or has it? Ms. Barrett, Jenny Barrister knows every word of, sorry, Jerry Barrister is an expert in the law. Brooke Binder knows every word of the Bible, cover, cover to imitation leather cover, in black, white and red. Why then would, we, why then would they both look, leave an injured lady and leave her in the mud? What would we do? Should we be surprised that the lowly pizza delivery girl was the only one to stop and rescue the lady? Why do we keep asking questions when we seem to already know the answers? Because whether or not we realise it, we're all like the man left for dead in the parable of the Good Samaritan. The Bible says we were dead in our sins. Trying to be good couldn't save us. Religion couldn't save us. But Jesus, the true Good Samaritan, rescued us. He was despised and rejected. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Jesus paid the cost so we can live. He became a friend to us so we can become friends to others. Well, well, it looks like my work here is done. The robbers are in the slammer, Miss Random is on the mend, and the toll road is safe. Amazing detective work, Miss Fletcher. And Nancy, of course. You're both so good at working out mysteries. Yes, a terrific. <gasps> Terrific result. <laughs> well, it may have seemed to be quite clever detective work, but in the end... It was 
Elementary, my dear Nancy, elementary. The oldest trick in the book. Distract someone enough with a small thing and they'll miss the big picture. But I'd say, in the end, you solve the mysteries yourself. <coughs> Am I right, Miss Barrister? Yes, it seems as if I've fallen for the oldest trick in the book. I focus too much <laughs> on the letter of the law, but completely miss the most important part. Love God and love your neighbour. How about you, Barrister? Any easier to read this story now? I'm ready to turn the page, detectives. Even though I only need to sell one more Bible this month to get a sales bonus, I think I'm going to keep this one. It's about time I really find out what's between these covers. I think I might change my life. And I owe you an apology, Samantha. I've spent so long expecting to find the worst in people. I failed to even see my own neighbour. That's... You're right, Yvette. That's... That's... That's terrible! <laughs> There's still one important mystery left to be solved. What's, What's that? that? I call it the mystery of what I'll serve for dinner. That too is elementary. My gourmet dinner is finally ready. Perfect, Chef Victoria. Well, I have five more pieces in the car. We can make it a real feast. What do you mm -hmm. have? Mmm, pizza. What do you have to say about that, Chef Victoria? I think that having now solved two mysteries is certainly worth celebrating. So bring them on in from the car. Wait, not anchovy, kaolin, applesauce. No, Pie. sorry. All I have left are pepperoni. Oh. Well, let's get well, let's go get stuck into Chef Victoria's gourmet dinner and pizza. And for those of you who have been paid for dinner, it's on me tonight. Everything. Remember, we all wouldn't be here if it wasn't for somebody else. Life is better together. You may be wondering what happened to these people after that fateful night. Well, Jenny Barrister and Brooks Binder realised the emptiness of their attitudes and together formed a non-profit organisation to patrol the highways and help those in need. 
Samantha moved her pizza shop to the Mountain Vista Inn, where it was wildly successful. Every day, several pizzas were mysteriously delivered to hungry people who didn't order them. Mistake? Or someone being a good neighbour? And Lady Random? She went into business selling flashback sets to church drama groups. Sally Fletcher is still a detective, but living fairly well on the royalties Miss Random pays her. And as for us, we can't wait till the next production. We can't. We hope you enjoyed. Not, we can't wait till the next production. But till then, we hope you enjoyed a not so terrible parable presented by Masters Peter. Masters Peace Theatre. Oh, please!